I guess for all of you who've been wanting me to start selling merch, this is kind of like the first stepping stone to that. Although this isn't actually gonna be merch that I'll be selling. I've had this idea in my head for months and finally it's coming to fruition. Let's hope it goes well. Oh shit. Hi friends, my name is Joel and welcome back to my booktube channel. If you've yet to check out my chill reading vlog where I finish Witches Steeped in Gold with a slow-mo reaction and also read The Summer of Everything by Julian Winters, oh my gosh. Some of my favourite books of this year. Honestly, amazing, wow. And you've yet to check out my Twitter nor my bookstagram, I would highly recommend you go check that out because I post some extra bookish content that you're not gonna see here. For today's video, I have become a pseudo businessman. I mean, I have my blazer on, I've got my casual business trousers at the ready, and I am making candles. And not just any candles, I am making bookish candles. For years now, candle companies have been making bookish candles. Candles with scents inspired by the scents that take place within a book. And it's just a really cool way to enrich the reading experience and enrich your love of a book by having a beautiful candle on the shelf. Years and years ago, when I was on Bookstagram, I collected a lot of candles. I remember when I used to have a part-time job um, in Primark, I I would get like, oh, the wages back then were really bad. I basically ordered from a lot of like UK candle businesses. When I read for Illumina Crate like years ago, they had some candles in their boxes too. And so I had them. It was just a really nice experience. And back then I didn't even know that I was actually supporting small businesses as well. Like, look at me go, look at me thriving and look at me helping out small businesses. And so way back when I wanted to start my booktube channel, I was coming up with video ideas with Ray and V. And one of the ones that I said was that I wanted to have like a series where I would attempt to make different bookish merch. And so for this kind of first installment, I definitely wanted to trial, in my opinion, the hardest one. And that would be bookish candles. I didn't want to go into this blind and I didn't want to go into this not knowing a lot of things. So obviously as an academian and as someone who loves to get lost in tangents, I reached out to some candle companies in order to garner some advice from them. We have Library Lights, Grace and Honey, and Wick and Whimsy, and all three of them did respond to me, and so I will give a bit of the advice that they gave to me to you. So the first question that, that I asked was that, how did they come up with the scents for their candles? Like, let me quickly grab it. Kenzie from Library Lights had very kindly sent me her 10 ounce fantasy candle. Like, it just looks super gorgeous, super sweet. It smells amazing, like, it smells like fantasy. Like, I, I don't know, I don't get how. The scents are black tea, lavender buds, and fresh rain, which is just amazing. So everyone basically said that for coming up with scents, they would look at what scents come up in the books or surrounding that particular character in order for them to come up with a scent profile for the candle. Mackenzie also mentioned for Essentia Literary Collection, she comes up with scents based on how the genre makes her feel. And so for example, Mystery, she wanted it to be dark and edgy whilst also being smooth and collected. And so Eucalyptus and Spearmint were two scents that worked really well within that genre. It's just done so well and I could honestly sit here and smell this candle all day. I'm not gonna do that for this video though. Maybe, maybe I'll do like an hour video of me smelling a candle. Some people might be into that, who knows. But Wick and Whimsy also keeps a large Google Doc with a lot of scent ideas in there as well so that they can go back to it whenever. And I think I'm gonna start doing that when I come up with like scent ideas for books because although I'm only making one candle today, I definitely think it's gonna be something that I want to do just for myself and like my own, like maybe like gifts for friends and stuff purely because I don't think I'm gonna want to be running a candle business, among everything else that I want to do. So this is purely experimentation for me wanting to start making my own candles. And so 
Yeah, then I asked, how do they make their labels for their candles? And everyone basically mentions that they use Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator to make their labels. Kenzie mentioned that she uses stock images to match the aesthetic of the book, whilst also for the Essentia Litera line, she looked at common colors within the genre and matched it between them. For example, sci-fi was a big decision between blue or silver. And in the end, she narrowed down to a blue that resembled the glow of a lightsaber from Star Wars and so that's amazing. But she also mentioned that she does print and cut her own labels purely because large printing companies have a minimum quantity of labels that you need in order to order from them. And it's a lot for the amount of candles that she sells. It doesn't really match up. Wick and Whimsy actually uses a minimal design aesthetic for their candles because they want them to make them look good in any space. I really appreciate that. Like Wick and Whimsy's labels were what immediately drew me to her brand and all of the candles that she makes because they just look so so good and I love them. I think I am gonna use a stock image for the candle that I have in mind. I want kind of wanna zhuzh it up between like using a plain black ground and a stock image photo. But Wick and Whimsy also mentioned that the reason that she got into bookish candles in the first place was that she wanted to make bookish candles that matched her own aesthetic. And I think that's such a cool thing. Like you initially start off a project for yourself, but then it grows into something that you can share with other people. And that is just amazing. I love that so much. I then asked what ingredient slash items would they recommend that I get for making my own bookish candles? Everyone basically flooded me with information that was so useful. Everyone basically meant recommended that I use soy wax, but Kenzie recommended that I use used Golden Wax 464 because that is the one that a lot of people use and is basically the best wax for making soy candles so I made sure to grab that. Just the amount of information each of them gave me it was just amazing to see like how knowledgeable they have become through candle making and it's definitely like writing or any other form of craft like the more you do something the more better you'll become in it and it means the more knowledgeable you are when sharing that knowledge with other people and I just think it's really nice that we have this community that can like share information with one another and like share tips and tricks of the trade and it just it just forms my heart it's amazing and then Wick and Whimsy also recommended candle science as a place to go to in order to learn how to make candles first of all because they do have a great encyclopedia of resources and so I definitely checked out some of their videos to see how they make candles and then I asked them about what is the best and the worst aspects of running a bookish candle business and so library lights mentioned that the best part of starting a bookish candle company was being able to create something out of her own love of reading that spreads joy and relaxation. She mentioned that it's so amazing to be part of a community that is so like-minded. It shows support in a way that she's never seen before, which I completely agree with. Like the support from the book community is just so amazing and lovely. It's just so cute and amazing to see us all support each other in so many different ways. She also mentioned that the freedom of working from home as someone with social anxiety is something that she never thought that she would have. And honestly, same. Like, I love the fact that I can do YouTube from home it just enables me to just talk to my phone without having to like talk to other people outside. Although when I eventually go into publishing, that is something I'm gonna have to like get over. Although I think because I'll be seeing the same people every day, it will get better as opposed to being like in any form of like customer facing role. I think that that would be quite scary for me purely because I don't do well with talking in person. I mean, the person that I met in Waterstones who knew who had my YouTube channel, I was such an anxious being that like, I am so sorry that I was so anxious. Plus I was on a date. So it was just like, oh. And then Kenzie mentions that the worst is her self doubt because she is the only one behind this brand at the end of the day and everything falls onto her shoulders. She doesn't have a team to bounce ideas off or help her with problems that she faces. And that can be a lot to deal at times. She loves running her own business, but how However, sometimes it can be lonely and difficult. And yeah, I, I think that is one of the things that comes from being a sole trader, like someone who runs their own business by themselves. Like everything falls on you. You have the entire liability of your business, but at the same time, it's all about having fun with it. And, and it's all about just living life and just getting through it and being the best version of yourself that you can be. And also having fun with the opportunities that you have. And I just think that I commend each and every one of them for taking the leap to starting their own candle businesses. Grace and Honey mentions that 
her favourite part of making candles is now the combination with her booktube channel, Becca in the Books, and making candles. Her entire job is centred around books, and so she's pretty much living the dream. She said that as someone who isn't artisanally gifted, she finds candle making a great way to channel her inspiration and pay homage to her favourite books. She also mentions that it's pretty therapeutic. I would say that you're quite art artistically gifted, because candle making is an art, and you're pretty good at it, so I would say, yeah, I would say you're artistically gifted. It is something that you have probably taken a lot of time and effort to hone and to grow. So it's a gift that you have watered and planted and sown the seeds and fertilized and it's like growing a plant. That is amazing. That is worth so much. And Becca also mentions that the worst is probably the pressure. Candle making isn't fast and when it comes to Christmas there are a lot of orders that come through and again as she is a one-person machine it is hard for her to like do it all. However she mentions that she still wouldn't change it for the world and I guess it's also trying to like love the business that you're in as well. I don't know how long it takes for candles to like fully set and so I need to kind of research that before I start making the candles just so that I don't be too impatient because I am quite an impatient person when it comes to things and so like yeah. And then Wick and Whimsy also mentions that like Becca and Kenzie her favourite part is also getting the creative freedom to do whatever she wants but also she mentions that becoming part of the book scrum community and connecting with other people was incredible. She's made so many good friends through her shop and especially other booker shops and candle shops like she mentions that you'd think they'd be competitors but everyone is actually incredibly supportive of each other which I think is amazing. I think there's a whole different thing when it comes to small businesses because small businesses would love to see each other thrive in the market and so I think there's definitely a different sense of support and love from one candle company or one small business to another small business. And then Wick and Whimsy also mentions that um, the hardest thing has been learning to run a small business as, as she mentioned, she went to school for graphic design, not business, so it's a bit, it's definitely a learning curve for her to try and figure everything out. And it's definitely something that I'm trying to figure out as well as someone who potentially might have to register as self-employed and it's just like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And it's just... But yeah, so that is basically the lowdown from the three respective candle companies that have kindly offered to help me with my candle making foray. And so I can formally announce that I am opening my pseudo business for today and we'll be making candles for the Tempered Wick Candle Company. And I mean, I think you can tell why I called it Tempered Wick. I mean, you temper swords, so why wouldn't you temper a wick? And so I am just super excited to be making these candles. And it was definitely a hard choice to try and figure out which book I would do for my very first candle. I had the City of Brass, I had the Poppy War, the Space Between Worlds, I had Ray Bearer. I had so many ideas. However, 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 I was on a call with V and Rhea and I was just like, I really need to think of a candle. I think, I, d I don't know which one of them said it, but they were just they were talking about Asia Monet's The Black Veins and I was just like, holy crap. Why, why didn't I think of this before? I will be making a candle based off of The Black Veins by Asia Monet. More specifically, I will be making a candle based off of Blythe's family's coffee shop called The Full Cup. And whilst looking at the descriptions, I thought maybe like a really nice coffee smell would be really nice. I think a coffee scented candle would just work really well in the situation. Maybe like hints of chocolate or something or hints of something sweet. I don't know. I just think that it's going to be really nice to see what happens. I have never made candles before but for Asia and for the Black Veins and for the Guardians I will do it all. If this goes really well I also want to make Poppy Wall candles. Maybe I'll make them during the Poppy Wall reading vlog. Who knows? Upon my research I also found out that you need one to two weeks for the scents to cure and as I'm planning to read the Poppy Wall quite soon I don't think it's going to be like ready in time whilst reading the poppy wall so I'm just gonna make them and then maybe we'll burn them in a future vlog. I don't know I'm really scared. Candle making just seems very daunting from all of the YouTube videos I've watched of people making candles and watching Sophia Nygaard's video of her making candles. It feels scary. It feels really scary to be making candles. However it's something that I think the more that I do the more that I'll get better at and the better I'll be. I am expecting 
mistakes, I am expecting me to maybe spill some wax. <laughs> spill the wax, sis. I don't know. I, I am expecting it to go a bit wrong, but like I mentioned, this is my first time ever making candles. Yeah, I guess that's everything. Um, Let's get to making the candles. Hi everyone, so we're in my kitchen. I am afraid, I'm like so scared right now because we have quite a few different things out and like it's going to be exciting, but at the same time, like I've never done this before. We have our double boiler. I bought one that only contains 900 mils of liquid. So I'm gonna be making seven candles, but I do have an extra jar just in case I do have a little bit of overflow just so that none of the wax goes to waste. These glass jars, I think they're about six ounces, like they'll probably make like six ounce candles. Then we have our wicks and our glue dots to put onto the wicks so that we can attach to the candle jars. These are, I think they're called Eco 8 wicks. I don't know, the candle site just recommended I use these wicks for the candles. Then we have our dyes. I was gonna use black for another candle, however, I ordered brown dye, but the company had sent me orange. So I'm gonna experiment with them to try and get a brown color. Then we have our chosen scent. As you know, we're making a candle based off the coffee shop in the Black Veins by Asia Monet. And so I saw this cappuccino kind of scent for the candle. And I think it's definitely something that I am going to want to have. Like my candle smell like, like fresh coffee and oh, it does, Oh, oh, it smells like re quite like sweet, but also you can really smell the caffeine in there as well. And I just think the candle is going to smell divine. We have a scale to weigh out our wax. We're not messing around here. This is an exact science and I don't really want to like pour too little wax into my jars. And so we have a digital scale. And then finally we have our wax. I have a lot of wax. I mean, I think I have more than I'll actually need for this and the next candle making experiment that I want to do. So, I mean, at least I won't have to buy more in the future. Um, so yeah, that's basically everything. I also bought a thermometer just to make sure I have all of my temperatures right. I do have a note on my MacBook ready to go with all of the temperatures that I'll need. So basically I will have to heat my wax up until 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit so that I can add the fragrance and the dye in and then mix it all together for one to two minutes and then I will then take it off the heat and let it cool down to a temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit so that I can then pour it into my jars. I won't be able to burn my candles now because they take one to two weeks to cure however we can definitely show off the candles in all their glory and tonight I will be making the labels for them so I think it's just gonna be really cute and yeah Okay, the water is now boiling and I guess it's time to measure out the wax. So, we have now measured our wax and the water is now boiling. So I'm gonna pop the wax right in. And so the wax is going to start boiling and yeah, we will check back in soon. Oh, the wax is already melting down. I'm so excited. Like the wax is melting so well at the moment and I'm just gra stirring it gradually as the instructions did say on some of the tutorials I had watched. And yeah, it's just looking really cute. I'm gonna try and break up this bit though because it's a massive like clump of wax. Look at how that's developing, like wow. That's so cool. Okay, so we've reached 185 degrees and I'm just gonna keep this on a low heat whilst I add the fragrance oil. I'm going to add the candle dyes in first. So now I will add in the fragrance oil. Um, since I'm using about, I should roughly aim to use about 10%. 
um, four golden whites, four sixty four. And now basically we have to wait for this to cool down to 135 before we can pour. So while we wait for the wax to cool down, we're going to attach our wicks to the jars so that when we go to pour them, they're already unprepped, ready to go. That is all of them ready to be poured. I'm basically waiting now for the wax to finish cooling down to 135 degrees Fahrenheit so that I can pour them into the jars. But no, I'm really excited to pour these and I think it's just gonna turn out so, super well. I'm just hoping the color is right. This is just about to hit 135, so I'm gonna take the thermometer out in a second and then get to pouring. I'm so excited. Oh God, where do I start? Where do I start? I'm just gonna start right here, I guess. Oh shit. So I might have spilt the wax a bit. Ha ha. So I made about six and three quarter candles. I did have a bit of a spilling incident with the uh, wax. Um, completely my fault. I'm gonna get to cleaning and then we shall <laughs> catch up in a second. But the area is clean once again, the candles are off, cooling down and just, you know, chilling. We would have made seven full candles if I had not spilt the wax. <sighs> like, how, how do they do it? How do they pour it so well and so amazingly? I think next time when I make candles, I might invest in a pouring jug or something with like a longer spout something with a longer spout so that it will make it easier to pour the wax into the jars. So I guess I will catch up with you all tomorrow when we review and finalize our opinions about bookish candles. And we're back. Um, I, yeah, I got dressed back in my business suit because we are a business and uh, why not? Um, so inspired by The Black Veins by Asia Monet. I now present to you. Oop, they're gonna fall. I now present to you the full cup by Tempered Wick Candle Co. I am just so happy with how this turned out. There are mistakes. I did mention that there would be mistakes. As you can see in the candle, there is a bit of frosting on the top. That was my fault because when I initially poured the wax, there were, uh, as it was setting, cracks began to form on the surface. And so I used a hairdryer in order to like melt the wax on top. Things for next time is that I need to preheat the candle jars so that they're a bit warm. I need to make sure I bang the bottom of the jar so that the air bubbles escape from the jar and that there is no air bubbles inside. And also popping this on a wire cooling rack just so that the temperature temperature of the surface doesn't immediately absorb the temperature from this and that it basically cools at the same temperature. But I think the frosting for this candle anyway works quite well because, you know, it's kind of like a cappuccino. So it kind of works as like a little bit of dissolved cream with and dissolved like whipped cream within the coffee. It also smells really good. Like it smells like fresh coffee, but also has like a sweet scent to it. Things for next time though. I do want to get a different type of label paper. This is quite a matte label paper and I would love something like Kenzie has on hers where it's like a matte, but it's like a smoother matte. 
I mean, I've been meaning to upgrade my printer for a while, but I find that this didn't really print as high quality as I wanted it to. Investing in a better printer would work as well, but I also wanted to invest in another printer as well, because when I eventually print my manuscript, I'm gonna need something that will print it quite well and to a high quality, because, you know, um, the one that I have at the moment doesn't really print the words cri like very crisp, but, like, it just doesn't so well. Yeah. We also did have some wax spillages. Purely my fault. I think that I had way too much wax in the jug when I went to pour, so I definitely think maybe making less candles in one go, because I initially was gonna do four, but then I was like, wait, I can just fit, like, all the wax in here, so why didn't I just do that? I was stupid. <laughs> I was very stupid. But no, I can definitely like set it on the bookshelf now and it can be a cute bookshelf decoration. So those who might be asking what I'm planning to do with these candles, I definitely want to keep a few for myself just so that I can like commemorate me burning some of these. I want to give one to Asia because you know, it's her book at the end of the day. And so when I eventually write her pen pal letter, I'm going to send this candle along with it. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's gonna be something that I want to do more of in the future. I definitely think candle making is something that is daunting to a lot of people. But also some people are like, oh, that's really easy. I could do that. It's, it's not easy. It really isn't easy. You can see, I saw through this entire candle making process, the amount of time it must have taken for candle makers to perfect their craft and to perfect their methods and the way that they make these candles. And it's just admirable. I definitely wanna ch maybe, once I finish the jars that I have, maybe change up these jars into something else. I do like the way that these look. However, I don't think they match my personal aesthetic. Like I'm so happy with how it turned out on a first candle making attempt as well. And it is definitely something like I mentioned that I want to do more of. I definitely want to have a shelf filled with candles that I have made. I don't know, I, now I can make like candles as gifts for friends. I can make candles as gifts for family. I can, I can just do so much with it and like make tea lights and stuff. And like, I'm already thinking like gift ideas for my best friend, for my boyfriend. Like, you know, it's just, it's just gonna be amazing. And I'm just super happy with how it's turned out. That's everything for today's video. Hello. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. As like a sneak peek, my next upload could potentially be something Poppy Wall related. This week's shout out fates goes out to the three candle companies who have helped make this video possible. Kenzie from Library Lights, Becca from Grace and Honey, and Wick and Whimsy. And Becca also has a booktube channel called Becca and the Books. She does this amazing TBR game called Becca's Bookopoly. And honestly, I am in awe with her creativity and the way that she does her videos. And so I will highly recommend you go check her channel out. As always, those links will be in the description down below as well. And also a very, very special shout out. It goes out to Abby from Book Tropics on Instagram. Her bookstagram is almost at a thousand followers. I think she's currently at 700, but I know us with, I think we're almost at 37,000? Ooh, I was wrong. We're almost at 38,000. Um, us who are almost 38,000 subscribers strong, I definitely think we can get it to a thousand followers. And so I will have her bookstagram link in the description down below as well. And if you wanted to see me on any other social media platforms, I'll have all my social media links in the description down below. And if you wanted to support me any further, I have my Amazon wish list and my coffee link, which you can use to donate books or any amount of money that will be used to help improve this channel further. Tempered Wick Candle Co. is a thing. Like, not an actual thing. Like, I'm not going to, like, start selling candles. Please don't ask me to start selling candles. I can have Tempered Fates as my name and then have, like, Tempered Wicks, Tempered Prints, Tempered Pins. This is an idea. This is all for, like, a pseudo business. <laughs> I'm getting so passionate about it. In my quest to become a jack of all trades, there is one thing that I can now say that I have completed. But yeah, I guess until the next video. Bye, friends.